Welcome to episode 18 of Monster MTV. Chief Monster here, thanks for joining me again. Today we're going to talk about, for you renovators or flippers out there doing work, how to get discounts from your suppliers and to save some money. This is a critical piece, particularly if you've got a substantial size reno or job or project you're doing. There are money, there, there are dollars on the table that you do not want to leave behind. You want to make sure that you save as much as you can and get the best deal because there are deals out there to be had. So, a couple of things that we'll uh, give you some tips on here because these come from direct experience from both my staff out there that have experienced this and myself. So firstly, if you're looking at suppliers or retailers out there, try and optimize what you can buy from them. Okay, what you want to do is if, if you're planning well, work out what you can, as many things you can buy from the one retailer or supplier. If you start going back and forth to three or four different retailers, or you go back and forth to the same retailer all the time without letting them know that you've got a, a, a substantial list to buy from, you're going to be buying at the optimum price instead of the, the, the optimum price for you, which is discount. So retailers like any suppliers, the less transactions they can put through at a big, bigger value is a saving to them. So talk to them, go through it, if you've planned what you've got to do, go through your list, take it in there, work out what it is you want, and, and, and try and strike up a relationship with the supplier or the retailer you think they're the ones that have got the products that you want. Particularly when you get to the second fix stage with design, but also even at the um, things like uh, cements and sands and timbers and tiles and all those sorts of things, adhesives. There's, there's money to be saved if you can work out where you can buy it from, and you'd be surprised Many, many of the smaller suppliers and retailers out there that will give you a bigger, bigger and better deal than what you might think from, from the big box stores. So, make sure you go in plan with that list. The other thing is, you might need to look at things you need to compromise on or can compromise on versus those that you can't. So if you've got your heart set on a certain look and it's a, it might be a vanity item or some tapware and you know you're going to get it from one supplier, then hey, that might be the deal that you can't go into and, and uh, optimize the discounts. But if there's things that you can compromise on, and it might be a different brand or a different look, um, things like some of the electrical items that you might be buying, maybe then is where you go, well, I can get it from, I can add that to the list for this supplier and optimize that by power, and you've got more uh, up your sleeve. The other thing that you need to look at is when you're shopping around for these guys, or you're doing your, your, your research to go into these different retailers or suppliers, Many of them, particularly some of the salvage yards which you might find that you're going to to buy stuff, will take stuff back from you. You may have five to ten, fifteen thousand dollars. A friend of mine recently renovated and he reckons his wife just found things to sell between salvage yards and online and made himself thirteen thousand dollars, which was a massive number that came off of what he was buying. So check that out. Maybe ask because they might you might have something they want. It might be a retro old look that you're trying to get rid of, but you know, one man's waste is another man's gold mine. So don't overlook that opportunity because you may find you've got some money in your uh, rubbish that you think you're going to get rid of that someone can take off your hands. So that's the, uh, the, the key piece in terms of how you're bulking up or assembling your items you're going to buy. The primary one is your research. Check out first what it is you're going to, where, uh, what it is you want and where you're going to go and buy it. There are numbers of re uh, retailers and suppliers online that will let you know the prices that they're offering. Very transparent in that. And you might find that even making a phone call to some of these, they'll let you know. Don't be afraid to ask for trade discount. Okay, if you've got items that are substantial, you know, in the thousands of dollars you're buying and they all assemble up and uh, are of some value, there are suppliers out there that will give you the deals. If you don't ask, you'll never know and you, and you won't get. So don't be afraid to undersell yourself. Go in there. And if there's some items that you know of, either a friend or a family member that might be doing some work around home that could be similar to your stuff and you can attach it to your list of items, again, you get that bulk buy and you've got more to go to the, to the supplier and ask for. So the other thing that you want to be considering when you are buying from these suppliers is the transaction deal, okay? You may be offering, you might want to apply on a credit card, but there are many suppliers that love cash and there might be others out there that will give you a discount even with your credit cards or an EFT transaction 
if you put a deposit on it first because if they're bringing stuff in for you that might be uh, not a stock item but they're going to bring it in, if they get paid up front or a, or a large amount of it up front, you may get a better deal out of that. So ask these questions, okay? It doesn't matter how good things are out in the marketplace and how busy they are, a good store or a good supplier is going to want your business because if they've got a happy customer, they know you'll pass on that information to someone else. And so make sure you ask that question and maybe work out what you can do in terms of a deal that way. Don't be afraid to strike something up because that's what the big players are doing when they're buying stuff. And a, and a, a substantial deposit is an attractive one to give you a bit, bit more of a bargaining tool. The other thing is, I'm going to tell you this, and some of the suppliers won't be happy with it, but don't accept the first offer. Okay? Often you'll find that they'll give you a price that they're going to try and optimize their best margin, their best price for, but you know what you've got up your sleeve in terms of what you want to buy. And there are others out there, there's a lot of competition out there where you can go and move around and ask for those prices. So it might sound a simple one, I'm telling, it could be preaching to the converted, but uh, bargain with them, okay? Raggle the price a little bit, haggle, haggle the price. Um, yeah, check it out, ask a question, go on the internet, there are lots of good offers out there, even what you might see in another state, you might find that you're based in Sydney and you see there's a better deal going on in Melbourne with, with similar supplies. Take that note, make the, uh, take that information down and, and discuss it. Like I said, if the suppliers want your business and they know you could be a substantial uh, purchaser, you're going to pass that information on. A good story is another customer that's going to pass on their brand to, the, to, to another player out in the marketplace. So make sure you get the offer in writing and then uh, discuss it with them and see what they can do for you. If they want your business, they'll come to the party and give you some discount, I'm sure of it. Be someone also that the supplier wants to deal with. Um, having been in retail and having been in uh, the other, other side of the transaction, no one likes a grumpy uh, consumer, no one likes an arrogant one, no one likes a rude one. Works both ways. If you start to build a rapport up with someone in the store or someone on the other end of that line, if they really like what you're doing and you might share your project with them, they'll take a genuine interest in it, especially if they're in the field of what you're trying to do and what you're building and where your project lies. So explain to them what it is. If it's landscape supplies, give them that image, give them that look of what it is you want. Because if they start to get your vision and concept, they'll keep going with it. And you might strike up just that friendly relationship with them. And then the relationship is of ease where you can actually win them over to, to get a better price, a better deal, they might even throw in free delivery, these sorts of things, you need to look at that. Um, if you take the hard ass approach, you know, that old school approach I think is going to almost drive people away, um, it's going to put their back up and you don't really put yourself in a good position. So best advice is work with a store and, and be a, a customer they want to deal with. Be flexible with delivery as well, you know. You might find that if you, you could be working couple or you, you got to limited times, but if you can, if you know that they're able to supply or deliver during the hours where it's cost effective for them, don't tell them why you're going to come before eight or after five because you're going to probably play, pay the highest price or it needs to be on a Saturday. Work with them. Or if they say, look, this is the delivered price, and you might go, well, you know what, I'll come and pick it up, hold the delivery free, take it off the delivery fee, take it off the price, you might have won yourself another 5 or 10% off the price. Who knows? But these are the other things you need to ask sometimes. And if something goes wrong with the delivery or the product they've supplied, my suggestion is stay calm. If you really get pissed off and you go bunter at the, at the other end of the line or with the supplier, you might find that they're actually going to react the wrong way. At the same time, you need to be assertive, ensure that they, you, you let them know where you've let, been let down what it is you wanted, what you were promised, discuss that. And if the supplier is as good as what they say they are, they will work to make sure that there's a, there's a happy ending for you because we're in the world of social media and transparency and no one wants their brand or shop all over Facebook or Instagram telling people where not to go. So it's a relationship. If you're gonna be dealing with these uh, suppliers, think of it not as a once-off transaction, think of it that you could be a long-time customer. At the other end of this table where you might be trying to buy it from, people view you as a lifetime value customer and they'll try and ensure that you've got that happy journey and you're getting what you want. So, um, yeah, don't rant and rave if things aren't going to your way. Work with them and you'll find that uh, you might find that they'll actually give you a little bit more than what you expected. 
And most importantly, with suppliers, um, remember that you could be dealing with someone that doesn't always have the power to make the decision that what you want, particularly it could be limited. So you might have to ask, hey, look, is there someone more senior around? Is there the owner, maybe if it's a smaller store? Because I can tell you, they might have some guidelines of where they're at, but if a $1,000 purchase leads to $5,000 or more, hey, I'm sure they're going to want to do a deal with you. So, like I said before, if you don't ask, you won't get. Think of it as an open transaction. You're forming a relationship with that store or that supplier and make it happen your way. And uh, I'm sure that if, they, if the store knows that you're going to be happy and you're going to pass on their um, good advice and a good experience to friends, family, etc., it's another potential customer for them later on. If you've got any other questions on how you might want to source a, a supplier, um, obviously there's a lot of online s suppliers like us, like Monster out there that you can source product from. And with Monster, it's, it's free delivery all the time. However, we don't have everything in, in our range at the moment, so if you need any advice on suppliers or what you might be sourcing, etc., don't be afraid to ring our Monster crew. We do more than just give advice on paint and the products we sell and make. We can help you there and give you more tips on how to save some money on your next project. Thanks again for joining me on this episode. Before I go, there is one, one important tip I'm going to leave you with about renovators. 40% of renovations in this country are over budget, and that's because of lack of planning. So make sure planning, a fail to plan, if you fail to plan, there's normally a plan of, to fail. So get yourself right with that piece, plan it right, and you'll stay on budget, save yourself money, and you're going to hold up. See you next time.